All right, welcome back again. So we're going to focus on just kind of teaching you one concept, and that's GPS and for solves and how you can use multiple solutions and some, some kind of tricks, I guess I would call them, um, if you do have a lot of different solutions to a puzzle. Normally, you only have one solution, but sometimes there'll be situations come up where you want multiple, um, and we'll show you kind of some of the differences between comma-separated list of solutions versus actually independent solutions. Big picture of where we're at. Uh, so we've got this day at the museum hunt. We've got the outside mini hunt. One mini clue inside of it is called bricks. The only thing we're doing is we're playing around just inside of this one guy. Before we dive into things, uh, there, there's a little bit of reading. Uh, so I would like for you to read the rest of section four. So this is actually kind of the most reading I've ever assigned you. So if you go over, you know, back to your hunt review guidelines, um, I would like for you to just kind of, you know, pause the video, uh, take some time and read about adding a clues, uh, clue info, uh, clue policy. I, I assure you, you'll learn little things in here, right? So. You should read this content at some time. There, there's no definitive time when you should read it in the series. Um, so may as well just, just pause the video now, uh, bite the bullet, and just kind of get some of that stuff done. All right, so hopefully you did, you did some reading there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate back in. So I'm already in my content. Um, I'm in the outside mini hunt, so I need the outside's content. You will get better at this navigation. And then I'm gonna go into the bricks mini clue and inside the bricks mini clue I'm going to update some things. The policies are still fine. Uh, the start info didn't exist before uh, and actually it's going to still not exist. That's not the tab I wanted. Um, content is going to change. Um, so before it just said the solution is F. We're, we're changing the clue, right? So the solution is no longer F. The solution is going to be something different uh, and the clue text you can just paste it, uh, copy paste it from above the video it's going to say what name uh, is on the brick that is closest to the back entrance. Uh, so I'm going to save that off. Uh, also, just for fun, um, I'm going to add an image here of just the back of the building. So it's this bricks clue content. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw that on there. Also, just to mention it, if you did want to provide navigation instructions, uh, you could totally do that. I'm not going to bother because we did it in the last video. Uh, but if you wanted to provide you know, navigation instructions to everywhere, um, you could totally do that in the start info. That's kind of where I started on accident. Uh, so what's the name of the brick uh, that's closest to the back interest? So this is actually fictional, right? You'll, you'll, you'll figure that out soon enough, even if I hadn't told you. But let's pretend like if you go around to the back of this building and you look at the bricks, um, there's kind of two that are both pretty close. It works out fine for me as a creator because it turns out that the two that are both pretty close both start with the letter F, right? So there's one brick that says Fisher on it real big, uh, and then there's another that says Flanders. And in fact, there's it's, it just said name in the clue, so it says thanks to Dr. David Fisher. What if somebody typed in Dr. David Fisher? Um, should that be correct? It's only correct if you, if you make it correct, right? So we're going to show you how you could do that. Or maybe somebody's going to type in Ned Flanders, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to add multiple solutions and we're going to do some sneaky things to make a comma separated list on one and a comma separated list on the other that does some different things. Let's just go do it. It'll make more sense to you once you do it. So back over into my hunt, uh, I'm going to go to the solve info. Um, so I'm in the bricks uh, mini clue solve info. Before it was F. I'm just going to delete that. D -d don't want F anymore. I'm going to add some new uh, solve info copy this uh, from, from the page above. Um, and so the first solution is for the first brick, right? I'm hoping that people type in Fisher, right? That's what I'm hoping they'll type in. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a comma separated list um, and I'm going to be a little sneaky about it. So I expect that they put in Fisher, but if they put in David Fisher, I want to count that correct. If they put in Dr. David Fisher, I want to count that correct. So these are all kind of like different versions of the same answer. And then what I'm going to show them, like on the on the UI of the app, is I'm going to show them Fisher, and I'm going to put in parentheses, or Flanders. The first value in a comma-separated list is special. That's what's considered to be the best answer. So the best answer, which nobody would admittedly ever type, is Fisher or Flanders. But I'm going to use this trick of how the app works so that I can show that to people. So I'm just going to show you, hey, if you typed in Fisher's, Flanders would have also been correct. So I'm going to add that one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the other one. So you can copy it from above and click on Add Solution, uh, and you could paste it in, and it'll say Flanders or Fisher. 
um, and they could type in Flanders or they could type in Ned Flanders. And you'll notice that these are separate solutions. They're both worth 10 points, so, so, so same value. Um, but I consider Flanders and Fisher to be kind of like separate answers, so I, I put them in separate areas, whereas different versions of the same answer are a comma-separated list. And hopefully this example kind of helps make that clear to you. So let's go fire up our device. Uh, if you need to, you can click on Reset Hunt, depending on what state you left it in. Um, the one little annoying thing that I did to you is I did... Um, put a GPS enforcement on the start code, right? Which means that you need to either just leave on the disabling of GPS enforcement that or, or put it on and take it off periodically. Um, since we reset the hunt, we do have to kind of drill down into it. Uh, so I have to go into the outside mini hunt and then into the bricks clue. The bricks clue doesn't have a start code, so it just puts us straight into it. And so it says, what is the name uh, that's on the brick that's closest to the back entrance? And if they walk back there, they'll, they'll see those bricks. Um, let's say that they chose to, to put in the top one. They saw Fisher, uh, and they put in Fisher. Um, and it says correct, which is great. You'll notice already, though, that it says Fisher or Flanders, kind of like up there in the solution. And when you click back to the minis, it says Fisher or Flanders. Let's put in the other path and just kind of see what happens there. Unfortunately, to put in the other path, you do need to reset the whole hunt. There's no, like resetting of a particular thing. So you do have to put in the whole, uh, reset the whole thing, um, and you do have to put in explore uh, to open the hunt, uh, and then 2008 to unlock the mini. Um, go into the bricks mini clue again, and this time we'll solve it differently. Let's say somebody solved it by typing in uh, Ned Flanders. Uh, so as a reminder, they might have typed that because they might have seen uh, Ned Flanders right there. So if they typed in Ned Flanders uh, and hit OK, it's going to show them, it's not going to show them what they typed in green, it's going to show them Flanders, which is what they should have put, or Fisher would have also been fine. So you can see that um, multiple solutions um, show the best solution in the list, um, and that's a trick that you can kind of use to make your hunts feel a little bit more polished, and also count different things correct if you want to use them. The next thing that I want to add, though, is, is that was not GPS enforced. Um, I want to actually reset the hunt again, and I'm going to add one more thing, uh, and that's GPS enforcement uh, on this. So in order to add GPS enforcement, I'm going to go back into my clue, and I'm going to say these solutions, I want them to be in the right spot when they do it. Uh, so I actually want to put in a GPS solve location. So I'm going to click on the map. Uh, I'm going to be sneaky this time, and I'm just going to zoom way in. Um, so if I zoom way in, it'll actually take me to like where the start code was, right? Um, and I'm just going to say, hey, this one, it's it's around the back. Um, also, I do prefer to use the satellite view, um, and then you can like you can really get this thing exactly where you want, right? So I'm just going to pretend like, hey, that brick is right there. They better be standing in that spot. The default on solves is to enforce them, like they better be standing there. And I'm going to set it to 25 meters, and I'm going to save it. Now if you go back to your hunt and you try it one more time, uh, so I think I've got to reset it yet again. <laughs> now when you drill back in there, uh, I won't make you watch me drill back in there yet again. Uh, so now I'm back into my bricks. I'm going to enable GPS enforcement. And you'll notice that if I try to, if I try to hit solve now, um, it'll actually check and see if I'm in the right location or not. You'll also notice that since this is a test registration, you got this test GPS button. And we just use this to help you when you're out in the field uh, to actually see if it's going to work out well. You'll notice that I put the min radius as 25 meters. That actually feels really big, like 25 meters, that's a huge number. But that's because GPS devices aren't great, right? So that's kind of to account for GPS devices not being great. So when you're out in the field, you would, of course, go test it with that. Uh, but when you're, you know, when you're just sitting at home, uh, you just disable it, uh, and then you put in uh, Fisher, and you get it correct. Great, so that's what I wanted to show you this time. We did multiple solutions. We also did GPS and force solutions. Um, and we just showed you some of these different features that you can use. Uh, come back next time and we'll start tackling the next mini hunt. See you then.